Hey, good evening, folks. Welcome back to War of War Gaming. Uh, sorry, we're running a little bit behind on videos, uh, but we got another episode tonight of Inquisitor Martyr, uh, and we're going to take a look at the next little bit of the story here and see what's going on. As always, please remember to like, subscribe, comment down below, and click the notifications bell for more great content from War of War Gaming. And let's get right into it. So this video is coming out about a day late, and we will have one more on Friday. So. Um, we did Monday, Thursday, Friday, rather than Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, but we'll be starting up uh, probably, uh, hopefully on Sunday, with, maybe even on Saturday, depending on how things go, uh, with our regular one-per-day video schedule. And we'll be on that for two weeks, and then we will be back to uh, three videos, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for two weeks, and then after that we'll be back to normal. Uh, we're going on our family vacation. We're going to be in the Ozarks doing some hiking. And we're going to do a little bit of a vlog of that, which will come out when we get home. Uh, and have a little bit more hiking, cooking, and some outdoors videos. And then we're going to get back to the gaming content after that. Uh, but I'm very excited to show it to you. I know those things have been more of a sideline, but this is the Wilderness Wargaming channel. And I want to show you some wilderness. Uh, if you are not going out there in the outdoors, I strongly encourage you to. Even if you're a gamer, a little bit of a homebody. You know, please get out there and check it out. It, it's good to get away from the screen, away from the table, and get out there and do it. And by the same token, if you are a backpacker, outdoors person, maybe consider some some hobbies that are a little bit more about uh, hanging out with other people and, and uh, maybe having some war games because uh, they can be an awful lot of fun too and exercise your imagination, especially during those times of the year when you don't want to go out as much. So let's take a look. Uh, these need to go in the back panel the inventory. Actually, I can probably put them in the stash real quick. Let's, yeah, let's take oh man, I wish I could just take all this stuff at the time. I need to upgrade. Oh, I don't need to upgrade. That's the person that's all for That thing I need to upgrade. I'm still not sure quite what to do with this thing. I think it's a little outdated now. But I'm gonna keep it. Because I'm not sure quite what's going on with it, but um, do need to start doing some Skull Tide stuff. Oh, you have to equip it. In order to get it. So we're going to try some, some of those missions at some point. I may research that a little bit rather than, uh, rather than do it live, but once I figure it out, I'll try, try to show you some of the later parts live because I think it'll take a little bit to... Uh, Anyhow, uh, let's continue looking here. We're still trying to get into this inner sanctum of Uther Tiberius. Uh, we were with Inquisitor Klosterheim, and of course he wanted to split up, because you know that the best thing you can possibly do is split the group up. Uh, so now we're going back in to see what we can find out about getting into this inner sanctum. He's messing with some dark machinations, experimenting with soulless pariahs, demons bound in mortal flesh, Else is where he the answer awaits me in his scriptorium. So I guess we're going to the scriptorium, which I think is part of the inner sanctum. The scriptorium is, as the name kind of implies, a um, place where scribes take logs. In the 41st millennium, a surprising amount of data recordings actually done on real world paper. I can hear you. I lost your signal in that nightmarish tribal camp. I liberated some captured members of my expedition. Where are you? I'm in the inner sanctum. In a scriptorium, I suppose. Uther Tiberius had his own secluded laboratory there, where he must have kept his personal cogitator. Find that room. Okay, and we're still on the, um... Yeah, Chainsword, uh, Inferno Pistol, and Flamer Combo. Uh, one of the topics coming, it's going to be coming up very soon. Uh, Sisters have undergone some changes uh, in 10th edition on the tabletop. I am not entirely sure how I feel about them. There's definitely uh, some frustrations, particularly with the mandatory squad sizes for a lot of units. Uh, for example, um, I had wanted to uh, maybe put like one buffer sister in the... Uh, in the retributors, 
uh, or, or a bunch of them, you're locked to five now. So you have to start losing your heavy weapons in order to start getting those detachment bonuses. Uh, that's not great. By the same token, the Dominions and the Battle Sister Squad are now locked to 10. Now, I can see value in that because uh, you can lose some and still maintain the squad, and that may have been the intent there. Oh, there's a big group coming over what is going on here. Oh, we got a level up. Okay. Great. Good stuff. Good stuff. Clearing that up. Uh, so there's definitely value there, but there may be problems too because, I mean, one of the problems for me, I don't have a whole ton of regular Boulder Sisters, Boulder Sisters, Boulder Sisters, to to fill out these, um, fill out all these, um, oh, sorry, I was talking over them. Um, I don't have a ton of regular Bolter Sisters who fill these squads out, so that's going to be a problem. I think I'm going to need to pick up one more box of Sisters. But on the other hand, there are, overall, I, I think they're okay. I still think the War Suits are a little overpriced. They're now the only, uh, you, they're the only Val can lead as a, um, as a leader, which, act, I mean, makes sense, but the War suits, I think, are still pretty overpriced. But I'm not making final judgments at this point. Uh, I haven't actually played a 10th edition game yet. This is just going on on instinct more than anything else. I just haven't had time with being out of town for the exercise and everything else. So it's going to be a little bit before I can get in there and really see what's going on with that. But we'll figure it out whether that's accurate or not. Um, I am very pleased that the vehicles seem to be far more... Oh, I think it's this. Okay, we got a hell brute. And it looks like a cap captain here or a chaos champion. What did you expect to find here? I was led here by dark prophecies and magnificent fever dreams. And you? You have no idea what they are. He's got a big sword. I'm sure we don't. Your gibberish. Die. I destroy your body and offer your soul to my masters. Don't you feel to speak of an inquisitor? Kill the inquisitor. Kill the inquisitor now. Tough. Oh, I think I actually already killed the champion. He was not actually all that tough. Look at all these little guys. Yeah, we're, we're losing uh, pretty suppressed right now. Let me get that back. Yeah, let's just let's get it with. We almost got him. Yeah, we nailed him. All right, got dealt him. Dealt with him. That's good. Okay, I haven't seen Helbert in a while now. And I'm actually a little surprised at how easily the champion or whatever, aspiring champion, whatever it was, went down. Uh, anyhow, as I was saying, I'm very pleased with how the sisters' vehicles are looking. The cast gear, especially the two, um, 
the Castigator's looking great, and the two um, Exorcists. I had bought those in, in the 8th edition codex when it was out, and my 2,000-point army plan at the time, uh, there was talk saying that uh, the Retributors were not actually going to be good, weren't looking like they were worth the points. Um, I think this is why you maybe don't want all this to always take stuff like, say, sites like Goonhammer. I think that I think that's where I got it from. I don't remember for sure. I'll probably go back and look. Um, I don't want to. I have some gripes with Goonhammer. I'm not going to go into them. Uh, they're doing a, a lot of hard work. Uh, it's it's just my personal complaints. But either way, point being, you I don't want to necessarily take their conclusions at face value right up front. Uh, before there's a lot of data in, because like anyone else, they can make mistakes. Um, right now, I'd say like they're they're, yeah, they're a little too quick to start with the something off of com type of jokes about Aeldari. Uh You've had one week of tournaments. I know some of you guys are data scientists. Some of you fancy yourselves data scientists, and believe me, I know what a data scientist is. Um, and you're you're doing a great job. The math hammer is, is good and all that uh, for the most part, but. But I see signs of being way too quick to go to the snark about uh, the Eldar and the craft worlds. Uh, and I say that as somebody for whom my craft worlds armor army exists and is substantial, but is semi-retired. Uh, they're mostly for my daughter. Like, uh, I'm not about tempted. I don't know why I'm tempted. But going out and buying three fire prisms is a very daunting task at a prisoner. I think I'll be better off to stick with the sisters as my main army and my custodians, who I'm now very fond of. Uh, anyhow, yeah, this is not supposed to be a rant about being uh, They're like anybody. It's it's mostly just a matter of they, they make mistakes like anyone else, and I do I do get the something awful sense of humor, but um, you're not on something awful regardless of your name. Sometimes I think you guys maybe need to tone it down on certain issues just a tad. Just a little bit. Uh, I would I would caution you to hold off a little bit yet. Uh, I think right now what's going on in with some of this is that there's some gravitation to the the perceived to be powerful factions. So I, and I think that 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 is something that's not easy to capture. Is what to what degree are balance uh, decisions affected? simply by player behavior. Do our top players going to what is, are our top players creating a self-fulfilling prophecy where perceived top factions just do better because uh, a lot of better players go to them. And what if, uh, what what would what would things look like, say, at near the end of 8th edition, if, um, or 9th edition rather, if, say, um, Right before their codex came out, if a whole bunch of top players, the best player, best ten percent, uh, mostly went to play Imperial Guard, even in the state it was before its its codex came out, would would that would they do better? Would different players pop the top? How would it look if the top ten percent were heavily just loyal guard players? And I'm not saying anybody should do anything like that. Uh, I don't. Tournaments are for winning. I don't think the tournament players should need to cripple themselves because of the game balance. But every time you adjust the game balance, you're going to adjust where the turn players lie. And so the top players, especially the ones who turn in the, the podium finishes. Whoops. I forgot to read that for you guys. Uh, do I found proof about the rebellion that tore the Mata apart. In the light of your recent discoveries, it all makes sense. I don't know how Uther found or created this pariah creature. But his followers must have turned against him afterwards. They were diehard radicals, willing to condemn hundreds to death so they could create an army of ex-demon hosts. Imagine what could have made them rebel. I don't care. They were cowards, and Tiberius was right. careful but that normally I try not to be talking a ton during these but I haven't been on much and I just want to go over a few things while I'm here talking anyhow about 10e 
I should probably sum these thoughts up later when I have a little more t time to organize them instead of just uh, trying to riff on it. But I'm also kind of like, I don't want to just sit here and click. Uh, I do want to get my thoughts out there a little bit from what I've seen so far. I'm not denying that the Alvari are clearly a very, very powerful faction. And even as a non-tournament player, there is real temptation to just jump into the wholesale. Um, I mean, there's temptation to go buy three, three fire prisms, but I don't need to be spending that kind of money right now. I'm just trying to largely tie down my model count right now, and as it is, I'm not going to be able to do that, I don't think. Um, it's highly likely that I'm going to end up getting those, just because I, I predict that, that fire prisms are always going to have access to that. In every every edition, uh, but I don't want to. Eldari are one of those those um, armies that very much like Marines. You could keep spending money on more and more stuff, and you have to really watch uh, not to be just chasing around. Because now, I mean, essentially, Harlequins are now part of Craft Worlds again, like they were in Second Edition. Uh, Inari is, for all intents and purposes, a Craft Worlds army, where you could just happen to take. And you could easily buy Drakari stuff just to play. With an Ari. In fact, if I'm gonna play Craft Worlds, I'd probably rather play them. Oh, here we go. I'm meditation chamber. I can see a journal. Open it. Uther Tiberius's journal fragment. I am burdened by doubt. I find this sentiment abnormal and troubling. Made thousands suffering, yet never wavered in my determination, for they all suffered, knowing their pain would bring forth the salvation of the Imperium. I survived intrigue, excommunication, and betrayal, and still prevailed, for I believe in the sanctity of my work. The flames of my visions were destined to burn away the darkness of the eternal light, but now I am filled with qualms. Looking at this being of immense power suddenly makes me uncertain. The Alpha Pariah is the first of her kind, the apex of my entire vocation. Still, the sight of her raw, untrained power fills me with absolute dread. Have I gone too far? Yeah, you almost certainly have gone too far. I mean, that's what we do when we're here before 2000. We go too far. I know that I risked eternal damnation. Hell, you did more than risk it, sounds like. But everything I did, I did for the sake of the Imperium. But what if I was wrong? You know, the, you know, the, the road to hell is paid with good intentions, bro. Maybe maybe you should have not decided you could just make everything better. <laughs> okay, anyhow. The pact I made with the Abomination, whom I will not name even here, fills me with shame. Oh, even this very day. But I am comforted by the knowledge that it wasn't aware that I had tricked it. But I remember its laughter, I remember the creature reciting that mad prophecy with obvious glee. So maybe you didn't trick it. Maybe it tricked you. And witnessing the Alpha Pride, the untouchable that never was, made me think of the Anathema Ultima for that prophecy. She could save the Imperium. From what? I mean, the Imperium's almost kind of state. It's always one minute to midnight. And she could also destroy everything I hold sacred. I decided to place her in the most secure stasis chamber to keep her sleep until I have a better grasp of her powers. Chamber 93 has been retrofitted with wards of my own design. No one can access the Alpha Prime of me. God Emperor got me the path of righteousness. Bro, I... Have you read the journal? I have. And it contains some surprising revelations. Even Uther Tiberius was horrified by the powers of the Alpha Prime. That's what he called her. <laughs> No, he locked her away in the main stasis chamber. Which means that she must still be alive. This is incredible. And we have a chaos sorcerer on the ship who knows about her too. I'm on my way to the chamber. I'm almost there. I'll meet you at the entrance. Okay, so we're going to go back to the ship now, conveniently. Oh, we're almost there, but let me teleport back to my ship. But you do have to resupply, I guess, take a break, get a nap in before you... You do it. Um, yeah, that's that's a constant theme in 40K of what exactly is salvation or reclamation or redemption? What exactly is damnation? It's it's not really clear. Like, what's the afterlife like? Afterlife like? What's yeah? You know, what's going to happen with that? It, that part of the whole imperial creed religion is very very unclear. Um, but anyhow, um, yeah, I, I, I could see myself getting a little bit better, more back into craft worlds. Uh, it was a little discouraging when I came back there. It was right at the end of 8th, going into ninth, and craft worlds were just in the toilet. Uh, at the time, I just started my sister's army. Um, and I didn't have space marines or chaos marines or custodies. I had Drakari, who were looking very, very bad, actually, at the start of ninth. 
uh, prior to them getting their codex where they went bonkers. But Drakari are not an army. I really, I really don't care much to play them much. Uh, I keep them around because my daughter plays them I mean, because I could use them in, uh, in Yanari, but I may eventually just give them to my daughter or sell them. None of my armies, they're the only one I would get rid of. Uh, but craft worlds like Marines have huge, huge numbers of models uh, that you could purchase, uh, especially when you start building more models to fill squads to their full size, and you can have up to three of them. I mean, you could you buy six sets of Howling Banshees, that's $300 plus right there just in Howling Banshees. Marines have a huge problem with large numbers of models, but craft worlds are almost there. Uh, they're the same thing. Anyhow, uh, but I, I do think there's been a little too much jumping conclusions of them. Some other factions have turned in great starting performances. Uh, the ones I've noticed, especially Imperial Knights, are a real standout to me. I think they are better than I thought they were, for sure. Um, I, I'm very impressed with how Imperial Knights have been performing. Now, granted, when I did my rating video, it was only army rules. It wasn't the faction as a whole. It was only the actual army rule. Uh, and I left out everything, including detachment rules, mainly because only Space Marine, only certain chapters of Space Marines have more than one detachment available. Uh, and then you know, Custodians. And I did expect Custodians to be strong, and I think they will remain strong. Um, I, I think that Custodians are really an army, that if Custodians are not one of the mid- to high-tier armies at a minimum, that, that something is wrong in the game, because what that means is that, that basically high-value models are not getting their value. Anyhow, uh, that, that's enough about 40k. I, I'm kind of rambling. Um, I'll have to give this all a little more thought and get back to you guys. Uh, let's take a look at level 30, because that's a big milestone. Okay, so what do we got here? Character. Okay, we have a point over here. Uh, where do we want to put this? Probably in contempt. And... Yeah, we don't have any more. What else have we got? Oh, we can choose another perk. That's what we're at. Okay. What new perk do we want? Um, more belt charges. More movement speed when in protected. That's a good one. 15% critical hit strength. Minus 7% damage reduction. Uh, that's tempting because I am trying to do critical hits, but... Hmm. I'm going to hold I think this one's a strong one. More 20% bonus to movement speed is very handy. Very, very handy. Passives. Oh, we have two points. Uh, yeah, we're trying to do critical hits. How about health? Is there anything we really need health? I, I don't know that we want any more health right now. Uh... Let's do one in crits. Oh, there's a weapon specific. Uh, how about area effects? Before we get too crazy here. Melee damage. It's 3% suppression bonus. So, mm, this is just not really blowing my screw up, so to speak. Uh, I might just need to bite the bullet here on some of this. Okay, let's take that one. Can't take that. It's very conditional here. Uh, well, this is how we're going to break into those. Yeah, we'll do that one. Uh, ranged weapons. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from weapon specific skills and stay skills that are useful all the time. I think I'm going to need to. Alright, uh, that's good. And let's take a look here at gear. We didn't get anything. Really any better. Uh, item level 13. Item level 19. That kind of could be better. But I don't want to do Dominion armor. I don't like Dominion very much. Oh, no, I 
circulator with that. Oh, or just sort of chainsaw and rod. No, I, that's not a combo I would use. Okay, uh, a lot of our gear is starting to get a little out leveled, so we'll probably be upgrading soon, but not yet, unless Captain Van Winter uh, has anything for us. Let's sell real quick. Your general is uh, I don't know, 30. Critical damage plus 22% critical damage. That's tempting. That's a little over. I don't want 30, I don't want 20. I don't know how you get that much. Alright. Looking like that. Let's get some of these blue ones here. Uh, I'm actually tempted with that. I'm going to buy that one. Uh, but before I get crazy here, can we... Can we upgrade this? Okay, I need to research optimization. Not sure I wrote over here. That's a lot of that stuff. Well, no, it's not. I got one million there. What if we keep doing this? Oh. <laughs> well now I've leveled it out. <laughs> Whoops. Oh well. Okay. That's that's fine. Uh Blessed Blade and Rod. These are the things I guess we can make. Make a Blessed Blade and Rod. Uh, hmm. Okay. Do I have any... It's not tell. Let me stick this sword over here and store it. Since I screw up, that's okay. That's how we learn. A little experimentation. This, this is one that's... I, I hate this one. Uh, that, that's a terrible weapons combo. Hand Flamer Rod is... I'm pretty sure this is the worst combo that I've seen so far. What do we got here? Cone Effect and Blade Dash. And then we've got the two for the rod itself. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Appearance. What can we do with appearance? Messing around here. Oh, check that out. you can recall your things all right uh, I'm not gonna mess with that too much right now we'll probably do a little bit of uh, Warhammer fashion at some point but right now I'm actually not gonna stick with that because 
perfectly honest, I don't dislike this appearance at all. It, it's pretty good. All right. Well, I think that's everything for tonight. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here again very, very soon. Goodbye.